2020. I'm joined now by Angus Taylor and Lisa Singh. This, Angus Taylor, first to you, has been claimed from the renewable energy sector that it would be the death knell for their industry, lose thousands of jobs. And uh, what's your response to that, I suppose, first of all? Well, it's important to understand what the report really says. What it says is that uh, there are lower cost ways to abate carbon, which is the purpose of the exercise, and the market's changed considerably since the target was set. It's grown far slower than was expected. In fact, it's effectively shrunk in recent years. And so the options that are being offered are both options to scale back the target, but not to eliminate it. And that's very important. And what both options are offering is continued support for investments that have already been made in good faith. And, and uh, certainly I support that. But, uh, you know, we'll give this due consideration in the, in the coming weeks. Lisa Singh, are either of those options preferable to the Labor Party? Absolutely not. I mean, the renewable energy sector has said it themselves. It's the death knell of their industry. I mean, why would you tamper, David, with something that transitions the electricity system into clean energy, that provides billions of dollars of investment in this country, creates jobs and reduces carbon pollution? Now, this is something that both the Labor Party and the Liberal Party had bipartisan support on for some four elections now, right back to 2001 when John Howard introduced the renewable energy target. We know the coalitions split all over the place on this. I mean, Angus is, uh, doesn't like the look of wind farms. I don't think Joe Hockey does either. While Sarah Henderson this week uh, received a petition from solar citizens of some 20,000 signatures. So uh, they're all over the place on it. Labor has been consistent <laughs> in that we need a strong RET in this country. And that's what we currently have and what Greg Hunt said we had bipartisan support on at the last election. The, the review, though, points out it's a very expensive way to reduce carbon. What is very expensive is propping up uh, a coal uh, and gas industry when the rest of the world is transitioning into renewables. Now, I come but, from but a there state... there are cheaper ways to, to from, reduce carbon. I come from a state that will lose terribly out of any reduction in this renewable energy target. Tasmania provides nearly half of the nation's renewable energy, has a $2 billion uh, project on the table to provide even more, as well as the myriad of solar and, and wind developments that are on the table, some $18 billion worth of investment to 2020. Why would you tamper with it when there is no good reason to do so, when there was bipartisan support, and in the long term it reduces electricity prices? Angus or, Taylor, you, you want a, a, a more efficient way to reduce carbon. Absolutely. Isn't a price on carbon the most efficient way to do well, it? Well, let me just start by responding to what Lisa had to say. What, what we all support in the coalition is lower electricity prices and avoiding unnecessary imposts on businesses and households. And what the RET review tells us very clearly, very clearly, is that this is an expensive way to reduce carbon emissions. It is inflating electricity, retail electricity prices. The RET and just on that. No, just let me on finish, that. Okay, Lisa. Okay. And, and, and there are better ways of doing this. So, you know, and as for the point about Tasmania, look, neither of the options that are being proposed here do anything other than support past investment, which is the key issue in Tasmania. There's been significant investment in the past and we need to continue to respect the fact that that investment was made in good faith. Both, both options are supporting that. And as a coalition, we've consistently said we support respecting past investments that have been made, unlike the Labor, unlike the Labor Party the in the mining industry. Just on electricity prices, the report says that there is about a 4% increase in retail power bills. So yes. the power bills that people pay at home, that's now. Yes. But they will come down over time and ultimately it will be cheaper. Now this whole review was set up on the, the auspices that you know we were looking at a way to get cheaper power for people at home. It looks like the renewable energy target is achieving that, so why? Well, it's not. It is, it is raising, right now, it is it raising electricity up. prices in the next at five years. Moment. Let me finish. The let fi next five years are the critical years because the target goes shooting up and the costs will go up enormously in those coming, in those coming years. $22 billion cross-subsidy over the coming years. That was the RET review. Deloitte also tells us that's costing us, costing us. 5,000 jobs across the economy. This is the so, biggest therapy, so, Angus. So it's the biggest therapy. If you therapy, misallocate investment, your own, Lisa, we'll just let him finish. We'll just, I will give you a review. chance to respond, but let's just, let's just like hear it. If you misallocate investment, you destroy jobs in the economy. It's very simple. 
any economist will, will tell you that's right, and we've seen that from some very good work by Deloitte. So the important thing here is to, is to ensure we do reduce carbon emissions, we do it the lowest cost way, and we protect household, uh, uh, we contain household electricity bills and electricity bills for businesses. Lisa Singh. Well, this is the inconvenient truth that's come out of this politically motivated review of Dick Warburton, someone who we know is a climate sceptic, that the Abbott government put in to get the outcomes that they wanted, which is, of course, to wind back the RET. Now, the, its own modelling, though, uh, ACL Annan has shown that in the long term, prices come down, currently at 3% and coming down in the long term. And if, if we reduce the rate... percent wasn't it? Just on that. 3 to 4%. If we reduce the rate, prices will go up. Electricity prices will go up. Right. And our carbon pollution will go up. There is no good reason to wind back the rate. It, it You've got will, all of this investment, David, that is going cost, to go though, to Mexico and elsewhere. It pointed out $22 billion in cross-subsidy. And the, co and the coal it. industry hasn't had subsidies from the government? I mean, come on. Where do we want to be? Do we want to be back in 1950? Or do we want to leave our children and our grandchildren with a, a low carbon economy, a clean energy environment for the future, like the rest of the world is heading towards? Uh, well, very quick response, and we've got well, to get to Well, I mean, where Australians want to be is they want to reduce carbon emissions and they want to do it a low-cost way. And the panel has told us very clearly that's not the case here, and it will have an impost on electricity bills. If if renewables are cheaper in the long term, you know what? They don't need a subsidy anymore.